This is Unserious. Last season, we explored the topic of relationship design on our show with guest Denise Burchill. It's an awesome conversation full of little wisdom bombs. So go back and check it out. Great relationships with great people are crucial to producing great work. Sometimes those people aren't just great, they're stars. They come with their own special gravity that you have to learn to work with and not get thrown off your own orbit. Our guest today has mastered the art of the exceptional relationship. Adria Marquez is the founder of Latidos Media, an independent digital marketing and communications consultant with special experience in equity and social impact. The lists of brands and personalities she's worked with ranges from nonprofits to finance and beyond. She was the director of digital content for the U.S. Department of Education during the Obama administration, advised LA Collab, which works to advance Latino representation in entertainment, and headed up comms for the MPA, the Motion Picture Association. She's also worked with high profile celebrities like Eva Longoria and the newly Oscar nominated America Ferreira to found the digital lifestyle community, She Se Puede and then Poreristas, which focuses on lifting Latina power and leadership. Wow. Adria, thank you so much for being on on Sirius today. Hi. Adria, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, well, I'm super excited to have you here because you are stinking unforgettable. Oh, thank you. We <laughs> met when you were when you were working for the Obamas and I was working for the Obamas and we were both mm-hmm. doing work around education. Yep. And to me, you were a star. You were just, you know, shooting across the heavens. And I couldn't wait to see where you dazzled next when you left the administration. And so I lurked away and watched (laughs) your career grow. And I'm so honored to be reunited and have you back in close in to my community again. So thanks for being here. Thank you. Well, first things first, you just shared with us that you recently got engaged. Congratulations. That is exciting. Yeah. Thank you. And you know, you do a lot of work Thank with your you. partner. It's such a modern romance. So I'm wondering if oh you can God. share your meet cute yeah. and tell us a little bit more about him and the heart of the attraction between the two of you. Please. Oh my gosh. Are you guys, I hope you guys are ready for all the cheesiness on this episode. <laughs> oh, please. Bring please it bring on. It. I mean, bring I love it. romance. <laughs> I love love. (laughs) We are unapologetically (laughs) cheesy. So we love our meet cute story. But we actually met, I was working in DC and uh, he was touring. So my fiance, I still feel funny when I say that. My fiance (laughs) uh, is a stand up comedian, Jesus Trejo. Mm. And he, at the time he was in DC, he was touring uh, and screening his documentary that he had made in collaboration with the AARP. You know, aside from being a stand up comic, he's also a caregiver. And a dear friend of mine who she will be very proud to, to hear her name on this episode, <laughs> my friend Irma, uh, she went to the screening of his documentary and she loved him. And she said, we want to support you. I want to bring all the girls out to your show tonight. And Ooh, way so to go, Irma. she <laughs> texted the group and she said, who wants to go support Latino talent? Mm. I happen to be the only one that was available. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yeah, sure, I'll go to the show. And it turns out she had ulterior motives. She was trying wow, to she did. set us up Way on a go. blind date. <laughs> I love a good matchmaker. There was a reason that no one else showed up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, fun fact is that I didn't know I was headed to a blind date. She had told Jesus that she was setting him up on a blind date. Oh, <laughs> Lucky for her, it worked out. Lucky for her, it worked out. Because oh otherwise... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that is wait. Well, first of all, Irma sounds like somebody we should all be working for. 100%, she sounds awesome. A hundred percent. She is one of the top most talented lobbyists in DC to no, no one's surprise. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's awesome. So what is the heart of the attraction between you and Jesus? Is it comedy? Is it caregiving? Is it the Latino, um, Latina community? What's the heart of your of your attraction? 
I mean, I think for some context important to share, I was always the single, independent, career focused auntie slash friend yeah. in the group. So shout yeah. out to all my single independent ladies out there. Yeah. I was always with this. Yeah, you got two of them on the phone right now. <laughs> I, that was always that was always me. And so it was completely unexpected, right? And so when I sat down with this guy, immediately it just we felt comfortable, right? And listen, I've been to many a dates <laughs> in my life. And yeah. Sort of sitting there and feeling like it was just comfortable, organic, yeah. again, ready for yeah. the cheesiness. Like you'll know when it happens, yeah. right? So that was very much it. We share a lot of passions. You know, we love food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We mm-hmm. love laughing. You know, I laugh at every one of his shows, even though I've heard his jokes many a times. And we're both very career focused, which I do think was like a strong foundation for our relationship. You know, we both love what we do and we're passionate about it. And even though we do very different things are in very different lines of work, it always feels like we're working together in a, in a great way. Yeah. Do the two of you work together on projects right now? Yes. The most recent one is, you know, Jesus is a, now an award-winning children's book author. And yeah, he released his first, he published his first children's book last year in June, uh, working on the second one. And I partnered with him as a cultural consultant and as a translator uh, because Mm -hmm. we did, you know, dual releases in English and in Spanish. Uh, So we're working Mm -hmm. on his children's books together. He was just announced as a two medal recipient for his first book. And we're just over the moon. They've been just received so well in the community. And I do think that a lot of it had to do with his intentionality to make this bilingual available for both. You know, it's the story of a young immigrant kid, you know, working with his dad in landscaping. Um, So it's just been such a special project for us to, to collaborate on, you know, currently working on the second one coming out later this year. Talk to me about your modern work relationship with um with Jesus cuz all of us in in the world of work you're busy you're on teams you're getting shit done mm-hmm. and then you go home at night and then you're talking about your work day with your friends with your partner with your family you might be sharing sweet nothings into the ear of your dog <laughs> and so um you know those family and friends become a support system mm-hmm. to your professional development and to your career goals yeah. and so i'm curious you guys overlap in this professional space i'm wondering how do you how do you support each other in your career dreams we like to learn from each other a lot. I think it comes very natural that we're always brainstorming and dreaming and come up with silly ideas. Sometimes they're not even like real projects Mm. that we come up with, but we'll be like having a meal and we'll be like, Ooh, I have an idea for a new board game. And what about, you know? And so I think it just comes very natural. We're both creatives at heart. I do think there's, there's, we got really lucky when it came to sort of the circumstances of I mean, not lucky because of a pandemic. That was a terrible situation that happened in the world. But because of us shifting, you know, into this hybrid remote work environment, you know, I actually moved to L.A. right before the pandemic. Not great (laughs) timing. (laughs) Yeah, not great timing. But because of that, you know, it pushed me to to start my own my own consulting practice and, Mm -hmm. you know, working remotely and setting my own hours you know, our schedules seem to sort of merge, you know, we would both be working at the same time. I think the dynamic would be different if I was still sort of going to a nine to five office job. Yep. But even when I've had nine to five since then, a lot of it is hybrid and remote. And part of my conversations up front, you know, when I'm negotiating a job is just be transparent and say, you know, I do travel a lot. You know, my partner's career require us to to be on the road a lot. And we choose to travel together because we have to be intentional about the time that we share, you know, but that also means that I, I have to be really good at staying on top of my work. 
right? Like, yeah, I have to learn how to work at that pace. And that has been a work in progress. I mean, anything from at the, at the beginning of last year, we were having a lot of conversations around whether our pace of life was sustainable, right? So for instance, yeah. he's always on the road and touring and he's involved in many different projects aside from his standup. And then I would be, you know, in a full-time job plus over-involved in boards or, you know, foundations that I was supporting and clients on the side. And then at night, you know, I'd go to his shows with him. Right. And yep. so sometimes I'd be taking meetings from airports or hotel rooms. And so it also pushed us to say, all right, we love this. This is great. Yeah. But how do we find balance together? Right. How do yeah. we also make this sustainable so that we're both sort of growing through this experience? So there's been a lot of sort of like shifting and reassessing and, you know, understanding that this is also a face, you know. So here at Unserious, you may have heard, we do a rapid fire called Hire, Fire, Boss. We give you a fictional team and you have to choose one to hire, one to fire, and one to be your boss. Great, great. So for Hire, Fire, Boss, the theme is Latina fashion icons. Okay. And so the first is, you know, old Jennifer Lopez. Okay. Breaking the internet and the social media waves constantly. Um, mm-hmm. I, I also, may have heard about her. Yeah, you may have heard about <laughs> her. I yeah. have a sense. I, yeah. She would oh. definitely, she'd take real issue with that emphasis on old though. Oh, I know. I know. She's like, I, I she looks younger than any of us. That's right. Um, the, uh, the second option is Selena Gomez. Uh, she's got mm-hmm. that beautiful winged out smoky eye. She's um, singing. She's producing. She's in shows. Um, and then the last is Sofia Vergara, the face of Head and Shoulders. But also, she is out in a new Netflix show where yeah. she is a Miami drug queen pin. And I can't wait. I'm like, yes, this is like a I cool can't stretch wait to for see her. That either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't want to fire anybody. No <laughs> cut. <laughs> I'm breaking your rules. <laughs> all right, gonna, all right. I'll go first because I I know exactly who I'm going to fire. It's J Lo. Okay, and it's, a, <laughs> She's it's out. and it's controversial. But okay, yeah. okay. Uh, it's it, I, I'm not a fan of her recent work with Ralph Lauren. I think it's okay. boring. I think as a fashion icon, I'm like, no, <laughs> you're wearing too much like too much American traditional. Uh-huh. Uh, boss Selena. Um, Sophia Hire. I think she'd be so much fucking fun to have alongside yeah. her uh, yeah. on a project. Anything. I'd be like, oh yeah. 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 I think the Selena one who Gom- makes me laugh all the time. I have Selena Gomez as boss as well. Like I think yeah. I think she is um and I think she's uh, like I think it's a very modern take on leadership is how I would see it. Um and so I think she'd have a more like decentralized organization. It'd be one that was focused on like well-being. She'd have all the networks for having a more um inclusive um team and output of work. And so um I definitely have Selena as as the boss for the world today. See, okay. Okay, then I'm going to disagree on on a couple of those. Yeah. Great. I would uh, boss Jennifer Lopez uh-huh. because even though I like I agree, like some of her style doesn't apply to me. I do see her as a trailblazer. She is mm-hmm. she's so brilliant when it comes to her brand, to her career. She's yep. entrepreneurial, you know, and you know who she is, right? Like there's mm-hmm. specific fashion moments that she has stamped herself in the history of fashion, right? So I appreciate sort of just her her being a leader in that space. Mm-hmm. Um, also, she defies ageism too, right? Oh, like yeah. someone was like, oh, I mean, granted, I probably won't look like J-Lo when I'm her age, but also like, you know, she she embodies sort of taking care of yourself and 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 always sort of like feeling pride and in, in your sense of identity. So I yeah. love that about her. I would hire Sofia Vergara 
a hundred percent agree. She would be so fun. She is one of those people that is so brilliant and people oftentimes don't see past sort of her personality, right? And she's stunning too. Yeah. So, you know, her her the way she presents herself is the first thing, but she's so smart. And mm. so I know that she would be amazing to work with. And I would fire Selena not because I think she's lacking in any way. <laughs> I think specifically when it comes to fashion, sometimes I questioned, you know, who her stylist is. Cause I'm, I'm like, I don't know that that was the best choice for Selena. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of her fashion choices have held her back a little bit. Yeah. And so when it comes to fashion, maybe she's the one I would fire, but also she would have a great career ahead of her. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, so. yeah. No, she would use it as a defining moment. She'd document it and then she and share it with the world. And then she'd have like a whole new set of work in front of her. Like she, it wouldn't slow her down. Like she, yeah, she she's was impressive. She's amazing. Oh, awesome. What would be your pro tips to other couples that are in this? gray space between personal and professional in their partnership. You know, how, how do you find that balance? What are some ideas or advice you'd give to other folks who are in modern romances like this? Yeah, I mean, I think to me, it's 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 never just black or white, right? Is have fun in the different gradients of gray uh, and seeing yeah. what works, right? Right now, when I yeah. mentioned like that was a face, I meant to say a face of like, oh, we wanted to do everything and be everywhere all at once. But, you know, we because we could at that time. And so then we'll enter another phase in which we'll say, you know what, you know, I might stick to staying home a little bit more or, yeah. you know, like we both respect each other's priorities and support each other and in, in finding that yeah. balance. So I think it's both embracing it as part of your dynamic. If we like to collaborate and we like to talk about work you know, we yeah. can do that freely without setting a schedule, but also yeah. have the conversation sometimes say, you know, I, I had to tell him once I was like, Hey, you know, our day nights cannot only be at comedy clubs because <laughs> yeah. you're working and I'm there as your partner. So like, sometimes we'll need yeah. like a night out somewhere that's not related to comedy or my events. <laughs> you know, like We have to be intentional about making that time. Yeah. So as somebody who is single and has been for many, many years at this point, <laughs> um, one of the things as I imagined myself in a long-term partnership like that was how would I take the feedback, take critique from oh, yeah. a partner and not take it personally? Yeah. How do you, how do you manage that part of the conversation? Do you have... Is he open to hearing the, whether you, you don't think his jokes are funny? It, are you open? <laughs> oh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it was like, mm -hmm. are you opening to hearing critique of your work from somebody who's not in it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say first and foremost, and I'll start with the cheesy line first. We are both each other's biggest fans. I, mm -hmm. I respect him. I admire him. You know, I never feel a sense of, of trying to compete with him. You know, I see the value that he brings to his career and to our home. And so I, I always sort of try to be a mirror for him to see his greatness and vice versa. You know, I think he does the same for me as well. You know, recently he, because he's been in the book world you know, he's been working a lot with librarians and this and that. And the other day we're just hanging out in bed and he was like, oh man, you would be such a great executive director to the American Librarian Association. And I was like, where did that even come from? I have no experience with librarians <laughs> or libraries, but I love that he sees that in me. Right. Like, yeah. and so I was like, oh, that's really cool. He sees me in a different light beyond what I see for myself. Yeah. And so yeah. I think that's a really cool thing to, to find in a partner, right? So sort of that mutual sense of admiration. Yeah. yeah. And we can disagree on something. He can give me feedback and I say, yeah. point taken. Don't agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I also love that you can talk about like career and generous feedback as part of your pillow talk. Yeah. That's awesome. 
<laughs> because you care about it. It's both exciting yeah. and interesting to to the two of you. So you can be in your jammies talking business. So that's awesome. I mean, sometimes we'll review emails for each other, you know, like, sometimes yeah. we'll be like, hey, can you read this? And like, how, how does it come across? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's actually a, something that I probably need. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is an email reader. <laughs> You have worked with some very high profile folks across your career, Mm -hmm. like uh, Michelle Obama, the Obama administration, uh, Eva Longoria, America Ferreira. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, how do you navigate, you know, getting work done well with their magnetism? Um, How do you how do you not be starstruck um, and how do you be a visionary in your own right? Like what's your how do you balance those high profile relationships? I would say approach the opportunity humbly and and be open to letting it be something different than when you thought, right? Like yeah. Each of those individuals have been completely different working personalities and I think it just comes it it just shows that building and nurturing positive relationships at work is yeah. is universal, right? Regardless of who you're working with it, whether it's a younger associate or if it's a secretary of education, just always approaching your work, willing to learn, being a good listener, mm-hmm. but also like it takes a little bit of practice to be confident yeah. in what you advise, right? And so I've seen that shift, at least in my professional career, where I show up differently now than I did eight, 10 years ago. And I feel a lot yeah. more confident to voice and give specific advice, you know, because I've been in those rooms. So sometimes it just takes practice, right? To, yeah. to, to work with different types of, of personalities. I'm curious, how do you, how do you prepare or how did you grow that confidence, you know, to show up in places like the White House or to show up at a, a dinner table with globally recognized celebrities? What was, how do you prepare? I would say know your value, right? If you're being Mm. brought in, it's for a reason, right? And so Mm -hmm. know the value that you're bringing, but also keep an eye out for opportunities. So Mm. a good example here is when I was at the Department of Education, I oversaw, you know, the content for the social media platforms for the department. And that also included overseeing the secretary's Twitter account. And that gave me an unexpected in to the secretary that most people in the agency didn't have. Right. So him and I would text often for him to review his tweets. He was very involved. You know, he is this Arnie Duncan. No, this was secretary John King. So so he's who who, after Arnie Duncan stepped down, John King. Mm -hmm. And um, Mm -hmm. so the secretary and I would often be back and forth on crafting his tweets. He was very involved, you know, in what he, what he would be saying on Twitter. And then also because he he's half black, half Puerto Rican, he really cared about his outreach to the Latino community and he didn't grow up speaking Spanish. And so his Spanish wasn't mm-hmm. great. And he, he invited me to practice with him. And so once a week mm-hmm. we would just have our check-ins in Spanish. Now, oh my gosh, I love was this. that officially yeah, part of the awesome. job? No, but I knew that I brought something that, you know, of value to nurture that relationship. And because, you know, so for that reason, you know, I got to staff him for Spanish language interviews outside of my job, but I was willing to show up and support him, you know, because I brought that value. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I was able to, to build a really cool relationship with you know, the former secretary and and to stay in touch ever since. And and that has been the case with, with most people that I have worked with. I I always find Mm. ways to stay in touch, both with people that, you know, I've learned from, you know, people that, you know, have, have, we've had great experiences working together. I, I like to think of those as long-term relationships more than just colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you say that because you and I had a conversation about what does it mean to bring your best self to work. 
Because I, because sometimes I feel like that's asking a lot that mm-hmm. to, for folks to bring in their life experience mm-hmm. alongside of their functional expertise, sometimes is, is really personal for folks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you countered me. You had a difference of opinion. I was like, no, we should not force people to show up as their, as their full selves to work all the time. Yeah. Because that could be taxing. And you were like, no, I think people should show up as their full selves to work. And you've used that to your advantage. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to, you know, open up like a space if you wanted to share even more about your thoughts on um, because your authenticity and your life experience has been a big part of your success of rolling up to the White House and these influential (laughs) um, these influential places and making a huge difference by being completely yourself. Thank you. You know, what's That's, funny, Molly, is like you left me thinking long and hard after we had that that initial conversation. <laughs> <laughs> because you I mean, you made such an important point. It's true, right, that many times workplaces are not safe environments where people can fully be themselves. Yeah. And and we recognize that there is, you know, a systematic oppression of many, many groups of, of people in different scenarios. Mm-hmm. Right. That's always going to be the case, unfortunately, and we're working to change that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would caveat with saying like within reason, right? Yeah. Within reason and always do it seeking your growth, right? Like if you know Mm. that being your full, let's call it your full self and say, oh, I'm going to show up in this crazy outfit because that's what I feel compelled to do right now. Like, really stop and think, (laughs) that sounds like me. Is that (laughs) real? I mean, listen, I was wearing sneakers to the White House with hoops and, you know, I mean, (laughs) with with a cute outfit blazer, of course, but. Of course, of course. But you learn how to push those boundaries carefully and strategically, right? Yeah. And that comes with practice. Like, you kind of have to know how to be aware of your environment. You have to know for you to be your full self, you have to be aware of who you're working with. You have to be aware of others. Right. And Mm -hmm. so always make, take calculated risks as long as they're actually contributing to your growth. If it, if it's just a rebellion for the sake of what pick your battles, there's so many battles we have to fight every day, you know? (laughs) Absolutely. I, um, I mean, I love the image of you and your hoops and sneaks. Yeah. (laughs) With, a, with like a boss blazer yes. rolling around D.C. I, I really have learned that relationships are one of our strongest assets, not just personally as humans, but also in our career. You know, I, I heard once Uh, some advice about, you know, highlighting your relationships and your networks and your resume. And I thought that was really interesting because most people don't include that. And I was like, that's Mm -hmm. true. Like it does bring value, but also just reflecting back on a lot of my professional relationships, I have been through the journey that I've been through in large part because of those relationships, right? Whether it be references, whether it be, you know, connections or networks, I'll even say I've made some really great connections out of rejections too, right? I've, oh, yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. interviewed with, with recruiters who like the fit wasn't right. And then we still stayed in touch. And so I always try to find those opportunities to, to connect with people and, and, you know, see outside of it just being a job or just being a project. Yeah. I, I, love I, I, I feel like you're really able to balance that very special liminal space between personal and professional relationships, Mm -hmm. which we also really love here at Unserious. And I'm curious of just sort of at the end, what is the secret to maintaining great relationships and work, whether they are, they are colleagues, whether they're your partner, whether they're megawatt stars, any final wisdom for folks? I would say find your people. Not everyone Hmm. is going to be your people. You know, um, yeah. as I, I've had to move a lot in my career to different cities. And every time I've moved to a new city, I always gravitated to finding my friends, right? That's, mm. I'm very close to my family and my sister. So I think that was why every time I moved, I'm like, oh, I want to find my family here. And yeah. so sometimes I would meet those friends within work. Sometimes they would be outside of work. 
right? I, I wasn't limited to one or the other. The sisterhoods that I've built, you know, in different cities, you know, shout out to all of my girlfriends, you know, who have been there for me all the way to learning from the Irma's of the world, not just in how she set yeah. us up yeah. successfully, <laughs> but learning from her and how she navigates the workplace and her leadership skills and say, Oh, I, I, I want to learn from her. I want to, I want to mirror what she does. Right. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I would say like people that are comfortable growing with you and, and totally you know, a, a very simple, but powerful moment was the first time I heard a friend of mine, you know, saying out loud, my next goal for next year is to get to the 300K annual salary mark. Yeah. And I had never heard that before. And I yeah. never knew that I could even envision something like that for myself. Wow. Right. Especially yeah. being first generation, second generations. Many of us don't grow expecting that we could ever make that kind of money. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. really find the people that help you see beyond your own line of sight and that like constantly inspire you. I I'm, I'm all about that. I'm, I'm the cheesiness overboard. Cause I have so much love for all of my, my friends work or non-work, you know, I'm, I'm here because yeah. of them. So. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And also just like the, story on like salary and what's possible. I think that's a journey yeah. I'm continuously on. And actually JB has been somebody who's done a lot of coaching with me mm -hmm. about my worth. Yeah. And so I think that's a Ask journey that more. <laughs> yeah. And I, I do feel like it is the, I think every woman has to negotiate her salary and you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for everyone out there. Exactly. But I, I love that you have a community of folks that you're able to have these really open conversations mm -hmm. so that together you guys can go further. So, well, I think that it's, we've been talking a lot about this over first season, this, this magic of relationships and, and how to actually build a supportive set of relationships without it being, without it feeling like being a pro you know, with the principles of friendship rather than uh, professional networking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you give like this, you, you've just given us this amazing roadmap. Mm -hmm. It's about listening deeply and having empathy. Mm -hmm. It's about delivering value over time. Mm -hmm. And it's about having the courage to be honest and mm -hmm. to have real candor with the people that are opposite you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's an incredible lesson for all of us. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. This has been such a fun conversation. Uh, thank you for thank trusting you, me to share my experiences here. Oh, of course. I'm all about being unserious. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> Anybody who's engaged to a comedian should be. Exactly. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> JB, Adria is oh. dazzling. Yes, yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm starstruck just being at the end of this conversation. I feel like, and I'm like ready to shoot off into a rocket into the stratosphere. She Completely. is wonderful. And I think, you know, just reflecting on what she shared, her ability to influence global stars um, her startup success, her like general magnetism, I think it's really rooted in her authenticity. I was just thinking about when she shared the story of influencing Secretary of Education John King and how she yep. brought both her expertise in digital strategy, but also most mm -hmm. important, her life experience as a Latina to effectively connect with educators mm -hmm. nationwide is pretty powerful and how actually simple that is. You know, yeah. just being yeah. able to... Um, to bring that experience in to drive change. And also come on, like this is, this may be a little bit my dream come true, but pillow talk about supporting each other's careers. Talk about a power <laughs> couple. That feels like a signal of like finding not only your true partner, but purpose in life. And isn't that what we're all seeking? Well, I, I don't know that all of us are seeking uh, career pillow talk at night, but okay, that, okay, you know, I gotcha. that might be you, but you, um, but, uh, God, talk about magnetic. Um, and the reason that she's able to work well with these people is just her own sheer magnetism. She comes yeah. with 
with her own gravitational force field, which is pretty uh, remarkable. I just, I, you know, and I loved um, the reminder about the candor that she maintains mm. in relationships, even when, you know, the level difference can be quite drastic. You can be talking with the first lady of the United States or, or you know, the power dynamic can be can really different. When I'm in those situations, I tend to be more of a pleaser. Me too. Um, yeah. And it me like I do focus on listening and delivering value, but that that part about having a hard conversation with somebody that you have um, a, a, when there's a big power imbalance, being able to do that really easily, it really takes your relationships from, from junior varsity to varsity. Yeah, and I think she does that because she's always herself. And so mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. there's integrity in it because she's always showing up as Adria. And so I think that's I think that's why she's just as much a megawatt star as the folks she works with. Completely. And that's the show. Thank you to everyone that has subscribed, rated us and shared our episodes. These are all really important ways to keep the Unserious community growing. To be part of the community, uh, find us on LinkedIn. Our website is unserious.com. And that's where you can find all of our previous episodes and show notes. At Unserious, we make work play. Where did that even come from? I have no experience with librarians.